what is power spectral density? We're going to look at an example and then some maths and then have a couple more examples at the end. And here is an example of my voice recorded saying the word density and I've recorded it twice. And you can see that these waveforms are not the same. They are different waveforms and that's because they are random. So they're random processes. And we're very much interested in characterizing random processes mathematically. And one thing we'd be interested in is in their spectrum content, so the spectral density. So how do we go about doing that for these signals, for me saying the word density as an example? Well, something we could do is we could take each of these waveforms and take their Fourier transforms. And that's what I'm showing here. Of course, these two Fourier transforms are different because the original signal was different. And so then we're left with thinking to ourselves, how do we characterize that overall? One thing we could do is we could think about taking this uh, many, many recordings of me saying the word, taking their Fourier transforms and then averaging the Fourier transforms. And that would give us some average information, some average characterization in the spectral domain, in the frequency domain. How do we do this more mathematically though? Well, it's even difficult for standard stationary signals. So me saying the word density is not stationary. It doesn't last forever. It doesn't have the same probability density function at every time instant, uh, which is what is the case for a stationary random process. And if you want more information on stand stationary random processes, uh, you can see the description below this video where there's a list of other videos on the channel. Let's consider these stationary ones. One problem with them is you can't take the Fourier transform of a stationary process because the realizations by mathematical definition, they go for all of time from negative infinity to positive infinity. So you can't take the Fourier transform of the realization. So instead, we're going to define something else and we're going to define this thing, which is called the power spectral density. So here's a definition of that. I'll come back to this just in a minute, uh, but first of all, let's just look at some of its characteristics. It's in the frequency domain. Uh, it involves this function F, capital F here, which is a function of frequency. And then we're going to take an expected value of it, uh, which is like taking the average. So that is what we're talking about here, uh, but it's more formal here. And interestingly, you notice this squared function here. So why is this function interesting to us? Before we explain everything in the function, um, it's interesting to us because if you take the integral over all the frequencies, then you get the mean squared value, and that is the average power. So this function, although it's complicated, this function relates directly to the mean squared power, which is something that we're, of course, going to be interested in in the signals. And of course, because it's a power, it's different from the case of just taking the Fourier transforms of my word density, for example, or the stationary runs which don't exist. And in this case, you can actually perform this limit. And this does exist, even though the Fourier transform of the stationary process does not exist. So let's just understand that a little bit just for a cup for a minute or so. So here's the um, information here, the, the components of this equation here. So instead of taking the full stationary process, which goes for infinite time, we're going to truncate it. And that's what we've done here. This is a truncated version. It equals the standard, uh, the stationary process, but only over a time between minus capital T and positive capital T and it's zero after that. So we can take the Fourier transform of this truncated process. And it's this process that we take the Fourier transform from. This is exactly the Fourier transform definition. And this is the term that exists in this definition of our power spectral density here. So I think you can see uh, it's uh, you, you're going to take the Fourier transform of a, of a truncated version that does exist. Then you can take the expected value and it turns out you then can evaluate this limit. Even though you couldn't take the limit of the original one, you can take the limit of this one. Uh, it's because it's squared and because of the expectation. We're not going to go into all the details here for that, but this is an interesting property. And this squared, as we said, it means that you get something that relates to the power. So it's a very interesting thing to do. This is why it's a good function. 
Okay, so why is it called a density? Why is it called a power spectral density? We can see the spectral component because it's in terms of the frequency, and we can see the power component because it relates to the power, but why is it called a density? So for this, we should look at the units. So let's think about the units of this function here. Okay, and one good way to start with that is to start by looking at the relationship between the time domain and the frequency domain in terms of the energy. And there's this relationship, of course, that if you integrate over all time the squared value of a signal, then it's equal to the integration of the squared value in the frequency domain over all frequencies. And this is Parseval's theorem. So let's use this to explore why this is called a density here. Uh, let's think about the, the um, units on both sides. This is, of course, an energy. So this is a unit of joules. So these both sides are units of joules. Then if we think, what does that mean? Well, that means that the component inside the integral here is going to be joules per hertz because uh, this is an integral over frequency. And so when you've got, if you had joules per hertz inside, and then you're integrating over frequency, that will be the same as multiplying by hertz, and that would cancel this. So if we work backwards from the units of the overall function, we can see that the units of the function inside would be joules per hertz. Now, what is joules per hertz? That equals watts seconds, because uh, that's what a joule is. It's a watt times a second. Uh, per hertz, uh, and this equals this. And this implies now if we put this function into uh, this function here, the one inside here, and we look back at our definition of the power spectral density, it's inside a function where it's divided by capital T. So it's going to be divided by time, that's divided by seconds. So we take this and divide by the seconds, and that will give us the units of our power spectral density. And we can see that that is in watts per hertz. So now we can see the units of our power spectral density is watts per hertz. And that's exactly why it's called a density, because it's power per hertz. And that's a de that means it's a density. It's not the power, it's the power divided by the hertz. And the hertz is the frequency component in the frequency domain. That's why it's a density function. So we've got a power spectral density uh, all explained with these equations. Let's just finish by looking at one extra interesting uh, property about it and, and a couple of examples. And that is that it turns out this particular definition, the power spectral density equals, can be shown that it equals the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function for the random process. So for more information about autocorrelation functions, again, look in the description below. Uh, you'll find actually a website, and that website has a complete listing of all the videos on the channel, all categorized. Um, so here's this interesting relationship that the power spectral density is the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. And let's just look at a couple of examples uh, that you might be familiar with or that uh, come about because of this. Um, noise, if you have white noise, which is IID, a noise process. So if, if the random variable X is, in, is noise, so we're going to use N uh, here and replace the X with N, uh, then you've got an autocorrelation function. If it's IID, the autocorrelation function is just simply a delta function because there's no correlation between any other samples in any other time offset when they're IID. That's the definition of independent uh, distribution. So this is the autocorrelation function, and the Fourier transform of a delta is a constant flat line. And that's according to this equation here. And that shows us that the power spectral density for white noise is a constant. And you can see that's this Fourier transform relationship here. And now we can understand this power spectral density here. And that's what we mean when we draw that horizontal line there. Another example, common example, is for digital data. And this is where you've got uh, square waveforms. And again, there's a video that explains why this is a triangle in the description below. Uh, and this autocorrelation function here, uh, which is a triangle, gives us a power spectral density, which is a has a sinc function shape because the or sinc squared function shape because the Fourier transform of a triangle is a sinc squared. And again, now we've got a characterization in the frequency domain of a digital data waveform. 
a stationary digital data waveform. And this is incredibly powerful for analyzing things in digital communication systems. So hopefully this uh, description and video has given you more information about power spectral density to understand what this complicated formula is. If it has, uh, give it a thumbs up, helps others to find the video. Uh, of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And as I said, check out the description below where you find a web page which has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.